We have been considering se several examples of co collisions and momentum conservation in one dimension. For simplicity, this makes the easiest forms of the ways to solve problems in momentum conservation. However, we must remember that momentum is actually a vector, and the proper expression for writing mo down momentum conservation for a two-particle collision is mass times the velocity vector for particle number one, plus mass times velocity vector for particle number two is equal to the sum of these two for after the collision, so mass one times B one prime plus mass two times B two prime, where both these two vectors are, are vectors and the initial two vector velocities are vectors. As a result of vector equations being completely separate in the x and y direction, we expect separately for there to be a momentum conservation in the x direction and a momentum conservation in the y direction. In other words, if we were to write down uh, momentum conservation for each of these two directions, there would be a separate equation like the one shown here, but each of these vectors would be replaced by the x component of velocity for particle number one and two and the y component of velocity for particle number one and two. Let us look at a, a small video of a bowling ball hitting a, a bowling pin and see the vector sum of momentum conservation. Let's examine when, what happens when a bowling ball hits a bowling pin slightly from the side. This woman's going to throw a bowling ball which is mostly traveling along the length of the bowling alley and not very much in the direction perpendicular to the direction of the bowling alley. As the ball hits the pin, the pin moves to the left. In other words, it acquires a momentum vector which points to the left in this picture. As a result, the bowling ball has to move to the right because there was initially zero momentum in the direction of motion perpendicular to the bowling alley and there has to be zero momentum in the direction of motion perpendicular to the bowling alley after the collision between the bowling ball and the pin. So the momentum vector to the left for the bowling pin is compensated by the momentum vector to the right for the bowling ball. Of course the vector for them hitting going along the direction of the bowling alley is still the initial momentum of the ball. Let's look now at an example of momentum conservation in both the x and y direction. In this example, let's consider a helium-4 nucleus which disintegrates and breaks up into a neutron and a helium-3, an isotope of helium-4 which instead of consisting of four particles, two protons, two neutrons, consists of only three, two protons and one neutron. Helium-4 has an atomic weight of four while a neutron has an atomic weight of 1 and helium-3 has an atomic weight of 3. Let us suppose that the neutron moves with speed 3v, where this v is the initial speed of the helium-4 nucleus, at a direction 90 degrees with respect to the helium-4's initial direction. And we can solve for what is the speed of the helium-3 nucleus. We'll call that v prime. We may first set down a set of coordinates. Let's write the x direction is in the direction of the initial speed of the helium-4, and the y direction is perpendicular to this. We must have that x, the x component of momentum and the y component of momentum are separately conserved. So if px must be conserved, we have to have px initially equals px in the final state. Initially, we have a px, a momentum in the x direction, from just the helium-4 nucleus, since it has an atomic mass of four times the, a, a neutron mass, we're going to write 4m for the mass times v for the speed of the helium-4. After it disintegrates, it creates a neutron and this helium-3. The neutron is traveling purely in the y direction, so its component in the x direction is zero, and the momentum of the helium-3 is 3m for its mass, times whatever this v prime is, its x component. In other words, the x component of v prime has to equal 4 thirds times v. But that's only the x component of this velocity that we're asking for, and the velocity vector v prime has both an x and a y component. To look at the y component, we must remember that py also must be conserved. That is, 
Py before the disintegration has to equal Py of the system after the disintegration. Before, there is no momentum of component, uh, component in the y direction because the helium-4 nucleus is traveling purely in the x direction, and so the initial momentum in the y direction is zero. After the disintegration, there's a neutron traveling purely in the y direction, and although it has a mass of only m, it has a velocity of 3v. There is also a helium-3 nucleus moving partially in the y direction, and we have 3m for its mass times vy prime. We may solve and find that vy prime equals v. The speed v prime equals the, the sum of the squares of the x component and the y component and take the square root, just like the length of any vector. It equals the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of the vector. Since we've solved for both vx prime and vy prime, we can now solve for v prime. We square 4 thirds v and 1 v. This makes 16 ninths over here for vx prime and 9 ninths if we want to put this over a common denominator for Vy prime, and 16 plus 9 is 25. The answer then turns out to be 5 thirds times V. So the correct answer is D amongst the five, the five choices given.